so I wait usually like a second or so because the audio lines up perfectly. I don't oh. have to do anything. Well, you're f now. <laughs> it's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slave. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slave. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week we discussed the state of DC's TV shows. Oh, uh, okay. Got a lot in there actually, we're yeah. going to talk about some new stuff with that. Uh, Mike, you are going to get your Oscar push for Black Panther finally. <laughs> They've heard your cries and they said, yes. we'll, we'll do it for Mike. My, my cries alone. Uh-huh, exactly. Uh, we're also going to discuss how 90s video games are getting movies. Oh, uh, the nostalgia train is catching up. <laughs> yeah, and more. And more, Mike. And more and more. Now, I know everybody has eagerly been awaiting my week two update for Shovel Knight. So here you go. <laughs> I, 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 just beat the, I just beat the main campaign. Super fun, super awesome. I, I mean, I was praising how well the game was crafted, but after going through the main campaign, they just so finely tune the difficulty through each level where it ramps up as you go through the game, but you start to get more abilities through the game. So the puzzles get harder, but you have more tools at your advantage, and you can buy all these armor upgrades. Super fun, super awesome. They even kind of have like a little bit of twist towards the end of the game. It's not hard to spot, but you know, that was kind of cool. Uh, you don't get a whole lot of that in kind of like 8-bit video games. So everything is kind of elevated in this. So I beat that. And once I beat the game, I unlocked like all of these different challenges. Like the game like almost like turns into a Pandora's box once you beat it. Like so much stuff gets unlocked. So I was going through all these challenges and I was just like, oh, this is cool. These are all these things I can do. Like almost think when you're playing like Smash Brothers, you have all those challenges you can do. Like fight off like a thousand like Jigglypuffs or something like that. And, you know, Mm -hmm. similar things. So I scroll all the way to the bottom because I'm curious what's all the way at the bottom. And it says like... Kratos boss battle like re- and, it, and I think it says rematch because you're able to like do a rematch for all the bosses I was like Kratos like I don't remember a an enemy in the game called Kratos and it's like listed right after like the final boss I was like what is this so I go down there and I hit X and then I see like this cloaked figure that I'm about to fight he starts talking and he throws off his freaking like cloak and it's Kratos from God of War like <laughs> that is like a boss that you can actually like track down in the game I just didn't know I never came across him because he's like a secret and I was like holy crap so you can like fight Kratos in Shovel Knight and then you can get like the power to have like a flame shovel and stuff it's crazy there's so many like secrets in this game and like, since I've got it so many years after the fact, there's, like, a prequel that you can play as Spectre Knight. There's another um, adventure you can play as, like, Plague Knight. That I, so, like, the game just cracked open. So uh, this is just another uh, another um, attempt to keep you people subscribed. Tune in next week. Let's see how far I get because I just started the Spectre Knight uh, one, which is cool because you're kind of, like, playing as the villain, recruiting the other villains as a prequel. So... There you go. There's my Shovel Knight update, Chris. I know you were eagerly awaiting it. I was, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, just while you were talking, I actually looked up to make sure I have my Spider-Man PS4 date down, Mike, because that's going to change my entire gaming schedule. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's going to affect me, too. Like, I only have, like, a limited amount of time until I butt up against Spider-Man because I was at GameStop, and I was just like, oh, I want to play with the Bloodborne games or uh, the Dark Souls games. I want to play one of them. I couldn't figure out what it was, and I was like, oh, they're all used and cheap now. It'd be easy for me to pick up. And then I was holding it in my hands, and I was like, wait a minute. Spider-Man comes out soon. I don't have time to play this, so I just put it back on the shelf, and I was just like, just got to wait a little bit longer. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, It does come out September 7th, which is a Friday. I keep thinking it's Tuesday because normally video games are prone to come out on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this appears to be a Friday now, and... um, yeah, I'm really excited to to sit down and, and do that uh, when it comes out. And, you know, I'm going to work on a way for one of us, me, you, either one of us, to maybe do some streaming for Superhero Slate so people can watch us and, and interact with us while we're goofing around on, on Spider-Man, you know? Yeah, that'd be rad. Be, be really yeah, fun. stay tuned for that, uh, that podcast after that Friday. We'll give everybody our initial impressions. And I guess depending on how long it takes us to get through the story mode, it'd be cool to do like a little spoiler cast on the game. Our first video game spoiler cast. Whoa, for Spider-Man, the first big Marvel game in a long time. So Yeah. Uh, really, really excited for that. Uh, this weekend, I have to say I went to the movies, Mike, and watched uh, the Happy Time Murders. 
Oh um, yeah, I was waiting for this like story on the on yeah. the microphone. <laughs> okay, so so let me just preface this. So this weekend, uh, my wife is in a wedding uh, in Indianapolis, two hours away. Um, but thankfully, like the wedding and all the stuff was like within like five minutes of each other up there. So that was like a blessing in the, in disguise. Um, so I, I got some time to myself. I leave. I hate going to McDonald's, Mike. I don't like <laughs> eating there at all. But I had to because I was getting some pictures printed for this wedding that was like taken like the night before. Like they wanted to have them there at the wedding day. Uh, and I was tasked to do this. So I got to run to McDonald's while these pictures are printing. I, 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 the rare instance where you pull up and they have the split drive through at McDonald's, you know, and no cars are in either one and no one's around the corner in front of you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can actually maybe get my food in a timely manner here. <laughs> pull up. I ordered the same thing I usually order. Two small cheeseburgers and a Coke. Great. Move simple along. man. Chris, yeah. he's a simple man. I don't, I don't wait. I don't hesitate. I don't say, uh, let me look at the menu. Like I just go for it and, and, and get out of there. I pull around and then all of a sudden a car is now in front of me out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, there was no one around me. There was no one in line. I don't know how this car gets in front of me. He's talking to the um, the person the win- who takes the money for him, mm-hmm. kind of gesturing. I think maybe this guy I was like, oh, maybe he's a drive through They forgot something. He needs more sauce. I don't know. He just pulled around real quick, did that. Uh, he's talking to this guy, whatever. Guy waves him forward, waves me forward. I pay. I look up. This guy just takes my order out of this lady's hands. How like, could he? Question. Just takes it, drives off. Just, How? just does it. Like I think this guy pulled up, scanned his way into free food, and drove off in a drive-through. I mean, it ad, ad, uh, admirable. He's got, he's got the swagger to take your McDonald's right out from yeah. under you. <laughs> so, so by the time I pulled up, there was people behind me. They were trying to give me the food for the people behind me. Was it I'm more like, food? Maybe, maybe you it were was not. Out. It was like a sprite <laughs> and some fish sandwich. And I'm like, uh, I'm not, boo! I'm not eating or drinking either one of these things. So, uh, <laughs> thankfully, I double checked. Uh, so. Uh, that was the start of my day. Then I go do the wedding stuff, and then my wife's out for the night. So I decide I'm going to go to the movie at 1030 uh, in Castleton. Uh, Mall. Do you know where Castleton Mall is? In yeah, Mike? familiar. Okay. Uh, so I get over there, get my AMC on, so it's free to me. I've already paid for it. It's one of my free ones. I and go it's, a, it's, a, it's a Muppet movie, you know? Chris yeah. is going to be there. You'll love the Muppets. You'll love the puppets. It, it is. It's, it's under, actually, Henson Alternative. So this is technically like a Jim Henson Company production. Like, they made all the mm. puppets and stuff. Get my seat, reserved seating, recliners, great, sit down. This couple comes in and sits in the same row as me. It's kind of a sparse theater. I, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, great, whatever. About five minutes before the movie starts, another couple comes in, an older older people, and they're like talking to these, and they got their phones out, and they're like, you are in our seats. Ugh. You need to move. They just half-assed move over like two seats towards me. I'm like, great. Which, which means they don't have any intention of trying to figure out what seats they're actually in. They just or even the if seat. they have tickets, they just probably just walked in and sat down. Like, yeah, I, at maybe. this point, I don't even know. So this guy is on his phone like the whole time, Ugh. like through like I, I give him like benefit. He ends up like I could tell like if, if I if anything I knew he was on Twitter and on his messages. I, like I could see what he was on and how bright this was. Mm-hmm. He ends up leaving for like 20 minutes of the movie. I'm like, I don't know where he went for 20 minutes. And he comes back, he sits back, back on his phone again. I'm like, dude. Oh my God. I just, I'm like, hey, I can see your phone. And he's like, no, you can't. I'm like, I, I can really see your phone. Like, he's not denying <laughs> he's on his phone. Or he just says, no, you can't. I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I can see your phone. Man, it's bright. He's like, no, no, you, you're joking, right? I'm like, I can see you're on Twitter right now. Can you please turn it off? <laughs> He's like, okay, fine. After this, we'll take it outside. I'm like, oh, great. Now someone wants to fight me at the movie theater. Oh, my God. Because I asked him to turn it. It's like, it's not like I it was like, hey, you're not, like, if he wasn't doing it, I would say, yeah, I'm wrong. But, like, come on. Don't. Why do you want to fight somebody at the movie theater for asking you to turn off your phone? Yeah, and it's just, like, it, it's hilarious that it's, like, I can, you even said, like, you saw what app he's on. It's just, like, dude, come on. And it's not like you were being, like, a jackass about it. Like, come on, dude, you're on your phone in the middle of the movie. You're just, like, hey, man, I can see your phone. Then that should be enough to be, like, oh, at least, the very least, maybe he shifts his phone to the other side of his, like, hips or something. Like, it, yeah, ugh, I hate people. Savages it, out there. It was, like, and then the hotel, I just couldn't sleep in it. Like, you ever have a hotel room you just don't get comfortable in? Mm-hmm. That was that one. It was just a rough Friday, Mike. I was, like, my only day off of work in a long time. I'm like, this is a rough Friday. <laughs> how, how how was the, the Muppet movie? Look, I mean, man, despite despite the the, 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 the cretin next to you. <laughs> yeah, I would say wait till Netflix on this one. Um, <laughs> I, look, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a film noir movie, and I really enjoy the film noir aspect. 
but it's so cut and dry and like there are maybe three or four extra laugh points in the movie that are outside of the trailers I guess but the trailers mm-hmm. like don't even play that bad, that good in the movie I don't like Melissa McCarthy in it I, th- like I wanted to see more of this like this is world where puppets and humans coexist in this world they don't give you the background of how that is or, or like you know why are the pu- like puppets are treated like minorities in this movie the whole way through and uh, like it sounds like you, it sounds like you got a bright on your hands <laughs> yeah probably and so I would wait for it to Netflix I mean I, I don't regret seeing it, but I would not tell anyone to spend any money on it unless you're, like, hardcore have to see pu- Muppet movies in, in the Oh, theater. man. But, I mean, just, uh, it could have been worse. Imagine if you were seeing Infinity War for the first time and that dude was in the theater. Ooh, that would have been. I think I can't, the, I can't even. the whole theater would have come after him. Yeah, I swear that, to God. That is the only, that is, like, a, a positive side of the, of the feverish fan base when it comes to superhero movies is when you go to those like opening weekend screenings, like people do not put up with anything. Like if you want to be a casual viewer, that is totally fine. But you got to pay attention, and you can't you can't screw with every everybody else. So I guess with happy time murders, like in a sparse theater, there's not much you can do. I guess. No, and and it's not like I was about to go out and ask, you know, like, hey, can you come in and take care of this guy? Uh, it was just, I don't know. It was it was a weird experience, and I think it may have like at least ruined the movie a little bit for me because of those people, but. You know, if anybody out there has, like, uh, theater-going experiences with, like, rude people, uh, let us know uh, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, comment on YouTube, send us an email. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from the stories because yeah. it's, like, it's so infuriating, but it's, like, nice to know that it's, like, not just happening to you. At the, end of, at the end of the day, he did put his phone up, but I thought he was going to jump me when I left the theater. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not, a, that's not a good feeling to have in the back of your head. It's kind of a win situation. We'll, 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 we'll see. All right. Uh, anyway... Uh, I also got to hang out with one of our uh, super fans of the show, Mike uh, Marshall. Uh, he was lives in Indianapolis. Was gracious enough to host me for several hours on Saturday. We played a game, a card game about zombies and deck building, and we talked nerdy stuff for several hours. So, uh, gotta give a shout to Marshall and uh, and his two daughters who were very very entertaining. They they were huge hugely entertaining. One of them is really good at Tomb Raider. And I think she's in first grade. I think or third, or third grade. I think she's in third grade. She's really Ra- good at Tomb Raider. Raising them right over there. Yeah. So, thanks, Marshall. Uh, and that notes also. This is our giveaway reminder. Since we did it the last of the episode, we're gonna do it at the beginning of this episode this week. Uh, I think we'll run this for like another week or so, Mike. Um, just maybe till the end of the month here. Um, but if you head over to superheroslate.com slash Infinity War, the link is in our show notes. You can, if you just put in your email, you can get entered to win a copy of. Infinity War on 4K Blu-ray with digital and special art book from Target or a 9-inch Thanos pop vinyl or 10-inch Thanos pop vinyl. Um, so we're going to put all those emails together and then pick a winner uh, yeah, for the next that, show. That's pretty badass. Uh, I was at the I was at the mall this weekend and any sort of slightly nerd adjacent store I was in had just literally a wall of like pop vinyls, I mean. Mm-hmm. I knew those things were popular, but since I don't collect them, I don't really kind of keep track of like where I would get them if I wanted them. Man, they are like all over the place and I didn't see that 10-inch Thanos pop, Thanos pop anywhere. So I don't know if it's like rare or it's just it, hard it's, to track it's, down. It's Target exclusive. So unless you're in a Target, you wouldn't have I seen was it. I was at two Targets this weekend and, and I did yet, not see Thanos. It is very hard to track down i think i mean um just i i think last time i checked it retailed for over 50 dollars, and it didn't sell for that much in the store Dang. so yeah um so we've got these things for you guys to win and just put in your email we're not going to sell it we're um, the only thing you would get from our email is a notification there's a new podcast available so yeah. uh we we don't we don't want to we don't like spam we don't want to spam you that's for sure yeah so, so superhero slate.com slash infinity war no hyphens in there. We were ridiculous last week. We thought hyphens in a URL would be a good idea. It's a we, bad idea. We Just were case... overthinking it very hardly. <laughs> yeah. Superheroslate.com slash Infinity War. And if for some reason you you don't have functional fingers, but you can still like operate a mouse or tap on a phone, we're, we'll, we'll tweet out the link, and then you just got to mash your meat finger. Uh, on that link, that'll take you right there. Yep, your meat fingers. Oh, that sounds dirty. <laughs> we're, we're all just a bunch of meat, Chris. Uh, that's, I guess so. Anyway, let's just get into the news before this gets very, very off track because <laughs> I can see this, this derailing. 
very quickly. Uh, Birds of Prey. Are you familiar with the characters Birds of Prey? Yeah, Birds of Prey. That was supposed to be kind of that uh, Harlequin vehicle movie before she was going to get her own standoff movie. I don't even know where it, where it sits now. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's in production. It actually will probably go in a, in the production before uh, the Batman will, if I was to go by reports. Um, because right now they're doing actual some screen testing. They're 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 taking uh, audition videos All right. uh, for this, so they're casting for it. Um, there wasn't actually a Birds of Prey TV show that was very loosely based on the characters and like yeah, I've kind of, I've heard it, a little bit it, of it and they're like it's not good. Yeah, it's it's atrocious. Um, but filming, if I just quick quick Wikipedia here, it'll show up uh, January fifth, twenty nineteen is when they'll start filming. So we are in that final window here. Um, the audition videos are hinting at characters in the movie, such as Renee Montoya. Are you familiar with her from any of your uh, Justice League or um, mm, Batman I, stuff? I, I don't. I don't think I've come across her. I mean, I quickly Googled her just to try to keep up, and she just kind of seems like a, a normal type of human, uh, maybe like a badass Jessica Jones type, maybe. Yeah, so she, I think she's a police officer. I think as well, maybe uh, in that that regard. I believe. If you uh, remember from the animated series, she was a huge part of the animated series um, and uh, some of the other ones. But uh, so that's one of the characters. If, if you remember the animated series, uh, Huntress, I believe she's an arrow or has been uh, an arrow or the Flash. Uh -huh. one of the characters, and then possibly the villain being the character Black Mask, who I think is like some sort of criminal. Uh, I guess gangster in, yeah, in the I, city. I, I think he had a pretty prominent resurgence in one of the Arkham games, I believe. I don't know which one it was, but I, I vividly remember the the high quality cinematic trailer that they that they created for it. And I believe Ma Black Mask was a part of that in some way. So yeah, I think Arkham Arkham Unhinged. It was the one I didn't get to play. Mm. Um, maybe um, e either way, um, he looks like Red Skull, but he's got a black skull instead is what he really looks like at the end of it um so those are the the, the people they're they're talking about throwing in there the the heroes would of course be huntress harley quinn and and possibly poison ivy or, or black canary I, I don't know so um, i mean all, all eyes all eyes right now on aquaman I, it, you know, we talk yeah. about how like Sony is trying to see like how Venom performs before they flesh out their their uh, Marvel cinematic uh, characters of Marvel Universe or whatever it's called. I don't even remember. But over at DC, they're just like, hey, we're just trying our best not to fall off the ship right now, and we're hoping Aquaman helps mm -hmm. thrust us forward. Well, I mean, I think I mean we have Aquaman and then Wonder Woman two or i guess 84 if you we didn't see the other 83 ones but whatever and, and shazam all of the three oh, shazam. movies that's right all of the three movies that they have coming up they they honestly legitimately could knock it out of the park yeah. um like aquaman could just be this fun crazy just like insane cg romp with like uh, a big uh, a big robot with laser eyes and sharks underwater like and we've never really seen a movie quite like it, so it really could it could smash it. I mean, we love Jason Momoa over e here. Everyone seems really enthusiastic about that project as well. Like, yeah, it, you've not I've not heard any bad things about Aquaman. Yeah, and we news. haven't really heard any sort of like troubling production woes or anything like that. So that's all good news. I mean, uh, Shazam, we really love that Comic Con trailer. That it yep. looks like to have a little bit of a fun energy to it. And then of course the sequel to Wonder Woman, like basically the only good movie that they've managed to make. So they could they could really hit a like what is it what's it called in bowling like a turkey they could get like <laughs> they could get like three in a row right here and this could this could totally change the dceu right here at this moment so uh i'm crossing my fingers because we all want these movies to be fun and good yeah exactly and i think i mean if anything if i remember any two things from suicide squad it's margot robbie's harley quinn and will smith's deadshot um so uh and we know will smith is working on bad boys three and bright two so um I guess we're going to leave it up to Margot Robbie to to work on this. And she's also uh, co-producing the film this time around. Um, did you see? Did you ever see I, Tanya? Did you get a chance to, to watch no, it? No, yeah. but I actually heard um, I heard a lot of people really enjoyed that. Yeah, so I am I feel with her being able to take more control of it, it, we may get a better movie than Suicide Squad around because, yeah. Anyway, do you want to own Suicide Squad? Do you want to own any of those other DC movies, uh, including Wonder Woman, that have been before? <laughs> Such as Justice League. Uh, uh, Chris, I can, all I can tell you is I wish I could return my digital copy of Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> That's well, all I can uh, say. Yeah, you won't get late charges. So, 
you own the extended edition of that one, right? Yeah. Oh, you get a little more movie. But so right now, if you are a fan of the DC extended universe and you want to own the Blu-ray slash digital copies, you can get all five movies for sixty bucks on Amazon right now. <laughs> and just throw four of them away and keep Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I mean, I if you are maybe like maybe split it with somebody who's curious, you can be like, here, you get the physical, I'll take the digital code kind of thing. Uh, no, um, it'd be no, it'd be great. I mean, I know the Justice League like Blu-ray or whatever is already out, but it'd be awesome if they re-released it. Says including the Snyder cut, and then when you hit play Snyder cut, it's just a picture of Zack Snyder like cutting a piece of paper. That would be hilarious. No, no, it's it the Snyder <laughs> cut. Oh I, I, I get, I get it. It's not funny, but I get it. No, uh, it, it's funny in my head. Uh, tweet, tweet at me if you think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam, go ahead, Adam. Tell him, tell him what you really think. Please uh, at me. I need the ats. So I think three of these movies have extended cuts. Is it Justice League, Batman v Superman, and Man of Steel all have extended cuts? So not Man of Steel, Suicide Squad. So if you want to get all of them and you don't have them and and you just you just got to have them here's your chance to buy them all if you didn't get them beforehand but that's the the sad part of buying all the movies when they come out mike is i like i I can't justify buying the phase one or phase two or phase three marvel sets because i already got them i don't need two (laughs) copies wonder woman 84 uh we got some good news about this hans zimmer is to come out of superhero retirement yet again to uh (laughs) compose the dc film uh I think ah, that, the com- the composer news that we get every once in a while over here on super we, we, had, we had two and i chose this one as, as yeah. the one i had to put in. where i always this is where i always try to find something interesting to say but really i should just be admitting i don't know anything about composing movies i don't i don't like uh kind of to me unfortunately good music in a movie is almost like something that you don't notice like you know it's there and it like if it's working if it's like perfectly like underscoring the film and like really reinforcing the emotional moments and and the um the action or the drama but really at the end of the day even after like a couple watchings like i'm only ever going to remember like what actually happened on screen i don't really remember the music so much but i do have to say um the wonder woman soundtrack her like theme is really cool but that wasn't han zimmer that was um that was junkie what's, what's his name yeah so maybe han zimmer can kind of uh, jive with that junkie xl jam a little bit who knows well i think they both worked together on batman v superman um which was his last dc outing and he was like i'm not I'm gonna do superhero movies anymore and that was only three years ago so he's back in the wonder woman 84 and he's also doing dark phoenix uh, he, he did the Dark Knight trilogy, um, which I don't remember the mu- music to that, but everybody likes those movies, so at least you know you didn't hate the music. Uh, Man of Steel, and he also did The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, which I did not know he did that. Hmm. Uh, I just always think Spider-Man was done by Danny Elfman, because that's what I always think from uh-huh. the Sam Raimi movies, <laughs> but oh well. Uh, I forget who the other composer announcement was this week. I don't know. We'll get to it later. Uh, Batman, uh, in, I call it, I'm starting to call this segment Schrodinger's Batman. Um, <laughs> because is, is Ben Affleck going to be Batman? Is he not going to be Batman? Is he dead in a box? We don't know. Where is Ben Affleck? Well, actually, right now we know. He's uh, checked into a live-in rehab for alcoholism yet again. So oh, Ben, um, Ben, Ben. Um, I think the story in the, in the tabloids, if you will, uh, his ex Jennifer Garner like had an intervention with him, and he decided to go to the live-in rehab for this problem. Um, if he's gonna be in there a while, we may not see him be Batman, but we we, we don't know at this point. We don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, I, I I hope legitimately. I hope he gets some help. You know, no no ill will versus the guy, but yeah, this doesn't help any sort of like theory out there that he <laughs> might possibly return as Batman. It sounds like if they're willing to kind of like recast and do like a weird alternative version of of the Joker as Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, they might as well just you know kind of re- reboot Batman, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say because I mean, if he does come out of this and comes out better and he can focus on Batman, you know, we might get something good no know, know what would be an interesting batman okay so out of <laughs> one that actually the, gets made but yeah. <laughs> out of all the superhero movies we've had a ton of batman movies so the audience and and the culture out here we we've seen tons of different versions of bruce wayne we get it we know what happens when bruce wayne gets in the suit there's different nuances you can play with it but he always has the same origin story and everything you know what if they just put a different character from the DC universe inside of the Cape and Cal, you know, not necessarily like just replace 
Batman with Nightwing and just keep the universe going forward. But um, I don't know if this ever has happened in the comic books necessarily, but just put a new character that's not Bruce Wayne in the exact same suit and he's still effectively Batman, but his character just becomes a little bit more interesting because he has to figure out what does it mean to be Batman? Is it okay to kind of reinvent this person that all of Gotham knows because, you know, he's mine now, you know, are, and are people going to notice that Batman has changed? What, what traditions that he's done should I have moved forward? Maybe I'm a little bit of a different person and I want to take crime fighting a slightly different direction. And I think that would at least be very compelling story on screen. Of course, it's not the authentic Bruce Wayne Batman, but we got tons of those movies, so you might as well just make it a little bit different and you still appease most people where you still get to sell Batman on the merchandising cup. You still get to put Batman toys in the toy aisle at Walmart, but you, but it's like just a well, more engaging story. They, you know? they have they have done it. I think, I mean, even Nightwing, there was a big thing where Batman was dead in comic books and, and that didn't stick, but like, I think they were fighting over who could be, who could take up the Batman mantle and mm-hmm. still be Batman because you always need a Batman. Uh, what you're kind of pitching sounds kind of like a scroll invasion. <laughs> Um, if he was replaced by like a shape shifting alien who's had to be Bruce Wayne and Batman. <laughs> well, not an alien. I'm not like yeah. just any 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 buff. Un- right. uh, unfortunately, any buff white dude. Just put any dude in the suit where people might look at him like in the middle of the night, and be like, "Oh man, there's Batman," but it's not really. Uh, so I think that could be interesting. Let me know at me again simultaneously <laughs> if this story already exists because I don't feel like it's necessarily unique. I'm not taking credit for this popping out of my head. This definitely seems like something that has probably been in a comic book before i might like to read that it's not that's not the, the story I'm, I'm people are probably gonna yell at me through through the, their podcast devices but like that's not batman hush is it that's not what that's about because i thought the guy who played hush didn't he like take over someone's identity i don't know it's, it's clayface <laughs> there we go it's clayface Mike. <laughs> he's take over yeah that'd be that'd be a crazy but i don't care about batman you know who i care about oh okay. i care about his <laughs> butler I want to see. His I want to see a TV show based on his butler and how, oh how did he gosh. become a butler for for the you Wayne know, family? I I don't know if you know, and I feel like I've already forgotten. But is this like a sci-fi show? Like, because I know we talked about it before, but I feel like you're just pitching more sci-fi material. Uh, I don't know what channel it's going to. You know um, what? Now that we're talking about it, I feel like it's like Epics. Showtime or Cinemax. It was Epics. Oh the, God. Okay, yeah, that's even yeah. worse. <laughs> e P I X Epics. Uh, they can't spell it right. Yeah, you shouldn't watch it. Anyway, they have a TV show called Pennyworth coming out there, and it's about Alfred. And this is, the, the the premise is, and I quote, Alfred is trying to reconcile the kind-hearted boy he once was <laughs> with the ruthless killer he was forced to become. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then he meets uh, Thomas Wayne somewhere, and like, and then the villains are the, the Raven Society, which, as I was reading about the Raven Society... It's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing where, like, there's not superpowered people. They're just really smart and they're, like, doing cat and mouse chess games across the. It kind of sounds a little bit like the Court of Owls. I wonder if maybe they're just not allowed to maybe use that name in this TV show because they might possibly show up in a bigger avenue some way. But the the, the Court of Owls is in Gotham. So if they're going to let Gotham use it, they're going to let anybody use it at this point. Uh, okay, <laughs> but I, I don't see like if I did a quick Google search on the Raven Society and there's like nothing in DC that popped up here. It's all about the University of Virginia. Um, I, I don't know anything about the. This is gonna sound it. really stupid what I'm about to say, but I feel like the only way this TV show works if it's if it's really good, which I know is like the most obvious thing that you can say, but I don't feel like Pennyworth is a lot of a draw to get somebody to subscribe to the premium cable package, so they're getting epics. <laughs> so I mean, good luck. I mean, hey, somebody out there, uh, some showrunner out there uh, well, got hired the, uh, is making a paycheck. Good for him. <laughs> of all the characters, like anyone who probably told them. He was like, yeah, I didn't want to make an Alfred show. And everyone's like, no. And then they, they just went to Epics and like, we'll take anything at this point. Yeah. So I wonder if they'll do kind of what Gotham did where they kind of like aged down all the characters and made them the same age as like uh, Bruce Wayne as a kid. Like, oh, we'll just age him down even more. Hey, guess what? Poison Ivy was around grandmother. The yeah. <laughs> You're fighting the granny. <laughs> Yeah, it's all it's all that. But, yeah, but yeah. it's the '40s, so she's hot still. She's not old. Yeah, I don't and, know. <laughs> and, and and she uh, she she had to plant Audrey too from the Little Shop of Horrors, and that's oh my gosh, it's all connected. That, it's all hashtag. It's all connected to the Little Shop of Horrors. 
Gotham, though, we got some news on Gotham. The season five upcoming uh, image seems to show what appears to be the mutant leader from the Dark Knight Returns comic book series. Uh, yeah, I remember. I, I remember seeing uh, seeing this dude. He actually looks quite a bit like him. I mean, obviously, he's not jacked like uh, a freaking mountain, like uh, he would appear like drawn because that's not humanly yeah. possible. But well, like, it looks like he's got all the headgear. Right he's got the, he's got the mohawk gear, the eyeglasses. He's got the two people flanking him to the left and right with the machetes and like the weird eye gear. And while he doesn't look necessarily straight up quite like a mutant does, I've, I've included a reference uh, image here below. Uh, he does still look pretty buff, and you wouldn't want to mess with him. So, uh, little little teenage Bruce Wayne may not want to fight this guy who may be... Is he teenage now in the show? Did they... Like, I thought... When I watched the pilot, I thought he was, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 10. Uh, I think he's much older than that. I think he's, like, maybe 16 or something like that. Dang, they're really... But they're also on season 5. <laughs> so. They're just they're just really trying to time it out. So like, oh, if we don't get canceled too soon, maybe he can be like eighteen by the time the show ends, and maybe we can put him in some he, sort of costume that somewhat looks like a bat. <laughs> he is thirteen when it started, so he is eighteen in the show now. Oh wow, I had no freaking idea. Yeah, yeah. So he is technically eighteen right. by the time. Hold on, uh, this hold on, everybody. Doing this live, Bruce Wayne, Gotham. Gotham it's TV on Wiki- I'm looking show, at it. Wikipedia right here. Season five. Uh, yeah. click onto images. Oh, just, wow. Yeah, I'm coming across. He, yeah, he does kind of look like an adult. Is he driving in this shot? I guess he's got a driver's he doesn't, license. He doesn't, he doesn't need to drive. He's got Alfred. No. Uh, well, who knows? He might be out fighting crime. Well, unless he's driving a Batman. He's going to make his Batmobile. Maybe season five will introduce the not-quite-Batmobile. <laughs> because they haven't called him Batman yet. Um, either way... I mean, while they don't need to redo the Dark Knight Returns exactly, that's a cool looking character. I mean, that's that's different. That's way more than I would ever give this credit, this show credit for, to be honest, because I did not know what they were gonna do when they started. So, uh, yeah, there's Gotham. Mike, you still watching the Arrowverse? You you know, it's funny that you bring that up because uh, you know I stopped watching. You know, when a lot of people stopped watching, uh, I think it was maybe season four, possibly. You know, drove a lot of fans away, and you know, I just kind of like jumped over to the Flash and some other superhero TV shows because there's tons of content out there, a lot of competition. But I wanted to know kind of how it was doing, so I was like, I bet I can go on YouTube and look up kind of reviews for the seasons, and I can just see everything that I've missed because I didn't really care too much about spoilers. I wasn't really gonna go back and dive into like you know two seasons of like 23 episodes anytime soon that i missed so uh i saw one person really really harshly review reviewing two seasons ago and they ended the review basically saying like i'm not gonna watch this show anymore uh it's not for me he, you know and all the reasons that i just said in the last like 15 minutes of this video why the show is awful and then i noticed like a year later he made another video for the next season and i was just like wait a minute dude i thought you weren't watching this show anymore and he says oh arrow's redeemed itself it's great now it's great again make arrow great again and apparently it is so i don't know i guess arrow's back on its feet maybe i need to watch it is he a paid reviewer <laughs> i know i think he was like honestly i feel ashamed that i watched him he's i think he's like 14 probably so okay but well so the Arrowverse is as they have done the past three years is doing a three show crossover a three night crossover event mm-hmm. featuring the flash show arrow and supergirl they're three big shows um so it looks like the I don't think the Flash normally airs on Sunday, uh, in the air no. on Monday. It looks like yeah. they rearranged the dates to put the shows in a different order to tell the story. Yeah, possibly. Uh, it does not tell us what the story is, but we do get to see a new look at the Flash suit, uh, the Arrow's regular suit, Supergirl, and then ultimately Batwoman signal in the background. Yeah, I've, I've heard an interesting theory about this where, um, so Supergirl is the lone girl in this uh, universe where she's on a different Earth, uh, you know, a different universe, but she's got some sort of portal so she can jump in and out very easily. Uh, some people are saying to kind of keep the continuity of this world that they're building, that there's a good chance that that Batwoman is probably on Supergirl's Earth. Okay. Which might help, possibly, since she's going to get her own show, it might help flat flesh 
flesh out some of her own characters and universe because I was thinking about it and it's just like, oh, well, I guess if there's like a, a Flash villain or an Arrow villain, maybe a Ra's al Ghul that they want to use. Well, Arrow's already done that pretty uh, significantly with a very specific actor. Like maybe it'll be different on, on that Earth. So, and then also it gives uh, Carol Danvers, um, not Carol Danvers, <laughs> uh, it gives a, it gives a Supergirl, I can't remember her actual, uh, her actual human name. Um, something Danvers. It yeah. is something there. It's not Jessica Dam. No, Kara. Kara. Uh, see, I was close. Yeah. They're they're basically almost the same. Actually, now that I think yeah. about it, uh, Martha. So uh, <laughs> it, it would give her at least another kind of superhero to play along with. So maybe they could just cross over, and they wouldn't have to use portals anymore. You know, they could just like she could just drive the Batmobile over to. Um, uh, I don't. Know, it's not Metropolis that Supergirls, and I think she's in a different type of superhero metropolitan city. But I, I think that's a cool theory. I have no idea if it's true. Yeah, I yeah, I don't either, but um we do get to see the I didn't expect her to have a bat woman signal. Um I've not seen that and notice it's very white and red. Like so you know it's not just regular Batman uh, mm-hmm. going on here. So we'll, we'll have to see how that ties into it. But what's really cool, I apparently I didn't put it in here. I'm going to have to add these notes in as we go uh no, it's right here. Superman uh, the the character played by Tyler uh, Hecklin will return for the crossover. I think he's going to be in all three episodes. Well, so I mean we, that that leans a little bit more credence to it might be on that Earth. Yeah, e- exactly. So we have three as uh, Superman in, in a lot of these, uh, and they're going to debut Lois Lane, also showing maybe more time on Supergirl's Earth as well. Hey, this the, look what happens when uh, a Superman Henry Cavill is away from his franchise long enough. That they'll just be like, oh, I guess you can do what you want. I mean, we're not really doing anything on the on the big screen right now. Yeah, go ahead, throw Lois Lane in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, who who do we need to uh, put in here that we've not put in here? We haven't put Lois Lane in, so we had to introduce that. They've not cast anybody yet, as far as I can tell, but um, they they are going to kind of lean probably a little heavier into uh, even with your rumor about uh, Supergirl's Earth more so than the Arrow Flash Earth for this yeah. one. So uh, we'll we'll play that by ear as we we get closer. Speaking of The Flash, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, in this upcoming season, they're going to have a character called Ragdoll. Are you familiar with Ragdoll? I can't say that I am, Chris. Um, I believe he's like a contortionist, kind of like... He's really kind of looks like a Raggedy Ann kind of <laughs> kind of character. All if right. You look at, if you do like a Google search, he looks really kind of weird, like Ragdollish. Um, but uh, they've cast a an actor from... Or not an actor, but like. He is an actor. He's been in other shows. From America's Got Talent, he's a contortionist. Uh, Troy James to play this character, Ragdoll. Well, Uh, that's going to help in the post-production department because they won't need a whole lot of visual effects. (laughs) Like, just do some weird stuff in front of the camera. You're really going to save the the CG artist some time. Yep. And and then in the comics, he doesn't really have any um, superpowers. He's just a master contortionist and a skilled (laughs) thief. So, all right. uh, they may change it up for the TV show. They tend to, to you know, to do things that make a little... They have a lot of meta-humans in, in Flash, so uh, they could meta-human him up for that. But they did get someone who actually can do the abilities rather than just CGIing the whole thing, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, Brandon Fraser's making his return to TV, I guess, or acting. I haven't seen anything in a while with Doom Patrol. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, uh, I think GQ... Uh, possibly uh, did like a really big uh, kind of uh, article on Brendan Fraser earlier in the year, kind of catching up with him, what he's been up to, how and why he fell out of the movie business. And he's kind of been slowly been coming back, but it's just been in smaller roles and kind of like kind of offbeat dramas. So mm-hmm. it's cool to see him come kind of coming back in a little bit more of a popular fashion uh, to voice Robot Man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So again, he's coming in Doom Patrol to voice Robot Man, but also act as his human form in flashbacks oh that's cool so I, didn't think we, I didn't think we'd actually see him yeah so in this robot man is a former race car driver whose brain is transferred to this powerful robot so he's going to be doing the voice of the robot and then in, in his flashbacks when he's a race car driver, he'll be the human form however many of those that are going to have i don't know uh but the physical portrayal will be by actor riley shanahan who i don't know and i have no no one to back that up with but um, to play the big robot dude will be Riley Shanahan, but the voice and the flashbacks will be Brandon Fraser, which I thought that's really cool that they can actually use him for both of those things and not just not just the voice. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Now for the main event everyone's here for, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Detective Pikachu uh, was our biggest news this week, I think, uh, earlier this week. They released a banner image for the upcoming movie. 
Um, it's got Pokemon in it. It says Detective Pikachu's yellow fluorescent neon lighting here. Uh, we know um, Ryan Reynolds uh, with his Deadpool 2 is now on physical. Um, it will be voicing Pikachu in this, and it will be in theaters summer 2019. I think this is the first theatrical Pokemon movie they've done officially since 2001. So it's been a minute since we've seen a Pokemon movie in the theaters. And as we kind of looked into this, um, they've actually they've been done with filming since May. So they're just doing all the CG stuff since then. Yeah, uh, and I, I think I kind of decided to spin this into a little bit of a larger segment because after we both did some research, we kind of got three... Uh, big kind of animated video game properties coming up, uh, possibly all in 2019. Yes. So um, not only do we have Detective Pikachu hitting May of 2019, so they're 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 putting this in a prime spot, Mike. This is the week after Infinity War. Yeah, we might be getting like a teaser trailer for this possibly soon. Yep, that's right. If they've put this up, they've definitely got something to give us. Uh, we have Sonic the Hedgehog hitting in uh, November of next mo- next year, mm-hmm. uh, and then also a Super Mario movie that doesn't have a release date quite yet, but they've they've been working on this for for well over a year now. Yeah, so, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if possibly this got pushed to 2020, maybe just to kind of clear the air a little bit from uh from these other animated properties. But these are all I would say. I mean, if you had to make like a top 10 list of the most iconic, most successful video game properties on the planet. These might all show up on it, and and, and these are all from the nine. I mean, I guess Mario's a little earlier than nineties, but we we grew up on Super Super Mario in the nineties mm-hmm. as well. Like this is a prime video game era, like a slice of it here, like uh, two Nintendo properties and a, and a Sega one. So I mean, it, just looking at it, I'm really curious how Detective Pikachu is going to go. They I was doing like I said, we did some research on this. Apparently the Pikachu is kind of they're trying to model it after like Rocket Raccoon in terms of like. How real do you want that to feel there? Like, mm-hmm. not is it going to be like real life looking, but like, you don't think Rocket is a raccoon, like a CG raccoon the whole time. You you, you feel him like a character. Mm-hmm. So they they're trying to base that on that, and it kind of gives a little credence to one of the writers here that we found out, uh, Nicole Perlman, who who wrote uh, the first treatment of Guardians of the Galaxy and upcoming Captain Marvel. Yeah, like, if you kind of compare these two movies and almost put them up head-to-head, because they're both the confirmed 2019 movies, and also, I mean, I know technically uh, Pokemon is like, what is it? It's not, what's it, like, Freak Show? Not Freak, what's the, um, oh, what's game the freak. actual... Game Freak. Game Freak, yeah. So, but really, at, at its heart, it's pretty much Nintendo. So you got Nintendo and, and Sega going head-to-head, which is a very old-school rival, rivalry from the 90s. And if you, if you kind of compare the two, they're both live-action animated. So it's not going to be like the Mario movie, which we believe is going to be all animated because that's yeah. what Illumination has done in the past. Um, w- when you're comparing them, Detective Pikachu just has a much higher pedigree for pretty much all of the categories listed when you when you think about a film. Uh, you got a you got a more seasoned director, uh, Rob Letterman for De- Detective Pikachu, who's worked yep. on Monsters vs. Alien, Shark Tale, a Goosebumps, which is a live action one too. So it seems like he might be able to combine those to success make Detective Pikachu. Uh, like we mentioned before, writer Nicole Perlman, uh, Ryan Reynolds, who was at like the yeah. height of his powers. I mean, he, I don't know if he could possibly get more famous than he is now. Um, and then to throw in a little Ken Watanabe, uh, and I think there were some other people in there that will probably be announced and we'll see in the trailer. So that's a pretty uh, high pedigree, especially when you compare it to the Sonic movie, yeah. which is uh, has an untested uh, director, directorial debut. I looked him up a little bit. He has some short films in the past, so I'm not saying he's never held a camera or directed before, but he's never helmed like a, a big film before, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But you know, you just if you're t- if you had to if you had to make bets based off the information, you probably are going to put it on Detective Pikachu. But Sonic does have a little bit of Jim Carrey and James Marsden, yep. which um, might resonate a lot with somebody who also likes this type of uh, property. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on here. Like you said, Pikachu uh, summer uh, movie for sure in May going up right up against like some of the biggest superhero movies of all time. And uh, and then Sonic, they're they're kind of waiting back a little bit in, in November. You know, they might have a little bit of a better shot to kind of uh, uh, grab a little bit more box office well, maybe. If I was to say, what is when's the last time... Outside of this this research here, you saw something Pokemon related, Mike. 
Uh, uh, just last night, Pokemon Go. <laughs> right. Okay, when's the last time you saw something Sonic-related? Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I think Sonic um, and Mario's Olympic Games, I think maybe a video game I thought of. Or at least they're racing. They have a Sonic uh, racing game that's several mm-hmm. years old now. So, Sonic feels like a desperate grab at keeping that character at the forefront of the minds, whereas Pokemon and Pikachu never faded in, yeah. in over 20 years. Um, and I think it's also, you know, some of the things... Nintendo's trying to branch out a little more into movies and stuff. Because the last time we saw an, an actual Nintendo live-action movie was, in fact, Super Mario Brothers from 1993. And does that leave a good taste in your mouth? <laughs> no, it does not. Yeah. Uh, but but I am excited about two very crucial things for these two movies. Uh, uh, first of all... Uh, they're both live action animated, yep. so you never really know what that is until you see it for the very first time. You can have all of these ideas in your head of what you might be seeing on screen, but we haven't visually seen anything. Not an official screenshot. Uh, I mean, I think there's like a set photo or two out for Sonic the Hedgehog that was leaked, but obviously Sonic's not there. They have to add him in. Mm-hmm. So you just don't know visually what you're going to get, which is fun and exciting for me. Um, and number two, this might be the way you make a successful video game movie. You go the animated route, you know, instead of going serious like Assassin's Creed, World of Warcraft, uh, you know, type of style first person shooter trying to make that work. Maybe this is the way you bring video game movies to success by doing like these kind of more animated properties, which is kind of I think at the heart when people think about a video game, they think about just the essence of fun whether it's violence or just the platforming so when you think fun you know usually i think animated so uh, I, like like i said i think we might be getting this detective pikachu teaser trailer soon because that's usually what happens when you kind of get that first title treatment released and ooh, i'm going to click play so fast on that i gotta see what pikachu looks like yeah i i, I definitely agree and, and what i'm i've noticed here there's another actual image that's a little like it's got a little more down on it um, and what I wonder, like, you know, we talked Detective Pikachu, but there are 700-something Pokemon in, the, in these games, Mike. Mm-hmm. What other Pokemon are going to pop up in this movie? You know uh, what? what? Whoever pops up, I just want them to kind of, like, make fun of them. Like, Pokemon are so ripe for satire, and especially if Ryan Reynolds is voicing Pikachu. Uh, like, you could do so many hilarious things, like, oh, that Pokemon looks like this weird part of the human body. Or that one is spewing gas and he it stinks like a fart or something. Like, you know, there's lots of weird, fun things you can do. Right. Well, I, the, the point is, I want to see them render... They're going to have to render all these Pokemon out. Oh, so, yeah. Like, we're not just... I don't think we're just going to get just... This world where just a Pikachu is a detective kind of thing. What so. if they What if they just ki- killed two birds with one stone and whoever they hire to render all of these Pokemon just uh, hey save the files and send it over to Game Freak so they can make like a, a really highly polished three G version of CG version of of, of of the video game. You already got the assets made from the, the movie. They <laughs> there is one coming out next year, so we will definitely be be see, that. That's the same year this is coming out. So uh, I don't think they'll sync them up, but we we definitely know what's going on. Um, there is a Detective Pikachu uh, video game already out, like an older one. Uh, if, mm. if anyone wants to play those, uh, it's a little, it's a little weird. Uh, just looking at the <laughs> screenshots. Anyway, uh, anything else you want to add to this, Mike? I mean, uh, we've we've talked to Detective. Pikachu. I think Mario's again. We're gonna be. I'm interested because it's a uh, anim- fully animated movie, probably because Illumination, who does like the Minions and Despicable Me movies. Uh, the creator of Mario, Shigeru Miyamoto, and Chris Melodandry, who did, I think, Despicable Me, are teaming up to work on this. And uh, there's no release yet, but... You know what? I, I, I want to put the question out there to the listeners. Out of these three movies, I know we didn't talk about Super Mario much because we don't know a whole lot, but out of these three video game films, you know, prominently rising from the 90s, what do you think is going to be the most successful? You know, do you think it's going to be box office, critical? Which one's going to leap? Because obviously they're trying to make franchises out of all these. So one of these is for sure going to get a sequel, I feel like. So which one do you think it's going to be out there, listeners? Let us know. Which one gets a sequel? I'm putting my money on Pikachu, but I don't know. Netflix could pick up Sonic pretty quick. (laughs) Anyway... Uh, James Bond 25, uh, Danny Boyle has left the film after creative differences, so now they are looking for a new writer or writer-director for this one. I um, mean, it probably won't make a 2019 release date. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about uh, Danny Boyle off the top of my head, but... Uh, I mean, say. he, um, 
what is those movie the fast zombie ones uh 28 days later like that was his oh yeah 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 uh he, he's got several other big movies under his belt but i mean i, I remember him first from 20 days later he's he's a great british director so i mean oh he at, did um he did 127 hours i saw that yeah he's done a lot of a lot of great oh. movies so do you do you want to see them push the movie back and and do another sequel daniel craig or just go ahead and start over <laughs> Well, I, I personally love our James Bond segments on this show because, like, we both aren't huge, like, James Bond aficionados. So I feel like we're getting like, – we always give our, like, kind of, like, most basic opinion on, like, I don't I don't know. Yep. like Sure, why is, not? It's, like, one of the few times where, like, a big, gigantic, like, multi-million, probably billion-dollar franchise, like, doesn't really phase me. This is must. This must be what normal people feel like when when we talk about superhero movies. They're just like, oh, I don't care. I'm just gonna wait for the trailer to come out. That's kind of how I feel. Like, I don't care who's directing it or really who Bond is. Like, just show me the first trailer and I'll see if it looks exciting. I mean, I usually don't go see Bond movies like right away. So I guess it's just a weird microcosm of what's it, what's it like not to be attached to a big franchise, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, everyone's talking about Idris Elba being cast. I'm like, no, he's too old. You have to go young. You have to do something different. So, uh, if, if that makes people angry at me, I don't, I don't care because I don't want to see him be James Bond. Put someone new, get someone you're going to get more than two movies out of in here is what I'm thinking. But well, they kind of they kind of already did the the kind of older Bond approach with Daniel Craig a little bit. I don't remember which film it was, but I think there was some sort of lines of like, "Oh, where you're getting old, can you still do this?" and scenes where he's like trying to like reconcile with his old kind of aging body a little yeah. bit and being an action hero. So and he looks yeah. like a potato in a suit, so he, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't pull it off very well. Yeah, it, it, Idris Elba would have been the perfect choice maybe when they were picking Daniel Craig. Uh, but yeah. yeah, or I at least within that first five years after yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. Anyway, Deadpool two is now out on physical media, Mike, uh, with the super duper cut. I've not watched it yet, sadly, but I plan on maybe sitting down one night this week and not doing anything and watching the super duper cut. Uh, but David Leach, the director of Deadpool two, is, is highly rumored to be directing Deadpool three. Which would also kind of go against what I thought would happen. Um, they would, I mean, Drew Goddard would still direct an X Force movie, so the X Force would be first, and Deadpool three would come afterwards, keeping Deadpool in the solo light rather than a team up movie, uh, like kind of like Avengers. Yeah, I guess we're still really not definitively sure what Deadpool three is, what X Force is. Could they possibly be one of the same? And really what happens to Deadpool, you know, once Dis Disney fully absorbs Fox, I think we're both pretty confident that Deadpool will will move along and keep making movies uh, just because, man, he, he really, he, he gets the bucks for sure at the box yeah. office. So Disney's not going to turn that away. No. You know, I like your idea where he just kind of stays in his own universe. We'll probably never see him cross paths with uh, Chris Evans and Captain America, which would be fun, but, you know, maybe well, Disney doesn't want to cross that line. If they did, there would have to be some sort of reboot later. I don't think I see Ryan Reynolds being that person, the, his version of it being the one that crosses yeah. over to there. You know what I see, see being more likely? Since Deadpool is just so much Ryan Ryan Reynolds' character, and uh, not creation, but he really brought him to the screen. It was really his project. I could see him just going like, okay, we're going to make a third Deadpool movie. It's called Deadpool X-Force. This is everything I've wanted to do with the Deadpool character. I don't want to I don't want to beat beat it into the ground. I think he's done everything he's wanted to do. I'm just hanging up the, the Deadpool mantle. Uh, I mean, I guess I can't stop Fox from making more Deadpool movies, but I'm not going to be attached to it, so... I mean, maybe that's just what happens. Uh, you know, sometimes artists do have like a uh, say over uh, what they want to do. So who knows? Well, it's like Hugh Jackman's not coming back for Wolverine yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't think I don't think Deadpool three and X Force will be the same movie anymore. I I'm leaning if th with this information, with them doing a Deadpool three, wrapping up his arc completely would be great rather than having him try to. Like, Deadpool 2 had an X-Force kind of thing, and yes, it works in that movie, but I need to see a true team-up movie with lots of mutant powers going on, rather than just Deadpool's goofy antics for most of it. Oh, uh, he's so goofy. He is, but, I mean, wouldn't it be cool to see some, some nice X-Force movies, like, them really using their powers on bad guys? Like, that would be, that'd be super fun. Um, also, if you remember Deadpool 2, there was a cameo featuring most of the Dark, Fe or Dark Phoenix cast, yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. Sophie Turner was not in that little screenshot there. 
And everyone's like, oh, that means she's going to die in Dark Phoenix. And then he's like, no, this is this is literally who we could get for the day of we did this film, the show. <laughs> yeah, I just assumed she was probably busy. Like, since it was such a quick scene, that always just kind of screams, like, we didn't have a whole lot of time to do this cameo. Who can we round up and get in makeup in time, you know? <laughs> yeah, so uh, the way I found out, uh, so the way they did this, they actually do the, they do the camera setup, the measurements, the lens information, and mm-hmm. sent that to the Dark Phoenix crew in oh, Canada. Oh, that's And they cool. were like, here's our setup. Settings. Here's everything we have. Film this shot with your people in it using the same exact settings. <laughs> then they sent it back down to make sure they could set it up that it looked right uh, with the Deadpool shots. So uh, I love that. That's so clever. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's cool. I, a- and also, I was surprised because since the since the physical version of it out is out and people are starting to look at the special features, um, uh, Vanisher was Brad. Pit, right? Yeah, that's that correct. Who, yep. Yeah, uh, I, we just assumed when we were talking about it in the spoiler cast that uh, they probably just like CG'd his face on there since it was basically a CG scene. But no, I guess he was actually there. Like they, yeah. he was in a suit and he was holding on to like physical like kind of um, uh, representations of power lines. I just assumed they digitized his face and just slapped it on like a dummy body just because like he's a busy guy. But so I thought that was just cool that he actually showed up for a day of shooting. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, Fun, fun little cameos and stuff. And that's why I'm, I'm excited to go back to. I haven't watched it since the theater, so I'm excited to go back to Deadpool too. Jessica Jones, uh, showrunner Melissa Rosenberg, will be leaving Jessica Jones after season three um, as showrunner because she signed a deal with Warner Brothers TV. Oh, and apparently maybe... this is supposed to be like in the eight figure range, is what I I read as Ooh, well. Ooh, I mean, good for her. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's been, um, she's been attached to the show back when it was called AKA Jessica Jones on like ABC yeah. years and years before the Netflix yeah. deal was announced. So. It's almost kind of like we get the best of both worlds with the deal where we get one more season with her where maybe she'll kind of get to maybe kind of like wrap up the story arcs that she's kind of wanted to tell with uh, the character. And then also moving over to Warner Brothers TV, I would imagine she'd be doing some sort of possibly superhero TV show or maybe since she's a, a big deal hotshot who signed a big deal, maybe she'll just create something original. I mean, she they, she she manages to make good television with Jessica Jones, so I'd be excited to maybe see what she would do with maybe an original idea in her head. They do have a streaming service coming out that needs original content. Uh, that is very true. So, because um, if I see Warner Brothers TV, like where would I put her? Like I don't know. Like what what what? Where does yeah. Warner Brothers TV go? I mean, she's really cool and uh, very female positive. Uh, like, what was it? A female directed every episode of basically every Jessica Jones that yeah. there there has been, and that's all her decision. Uh, I, I, think I, assume, I believe a lot of the writing staff was as well. Yeah, so I would I would assume that if she wanted to make more television, uh, and if it was going to be superhero related, I would I would assume uh, a female superhero. So that would be cool and something that we don't really have necessarily announced for the dc streaming app you know we have titans but that's an ensemble doom patrol that's an ensemble swamp thing i i would assume swamp thing is a is a male character i don't know i don't want to i don't want to assume gender on a on a giant pile of seaweed and vines well well, hopefully it's not (laughs) it's it's about him and not the people just around him and he pops up sparingly (laughs) <laughs> um, well, they do have the Harley Quinn animated show, but I don't feel like that's that's going for for quality. There, it's mm-hmm. it's just going to be you know an animated show. Um, what I would be interested in, you know, w- I know you're not a huge fan of Jessica Jones season two. Uh, maybe some fresh blood in mm-hmm. Jessica Jones if they can yeah. go with season four might be a a good shot in the arm. Yeah, I don't know well. if I would necessarily say not a huge fan. I just think I liked season season one better. Yeah, the, it, season two is a little more divisive. I think uh, again, my wife loves season two. Um, I think I it's just the I think it's just the ending. I think yeah. we we might have done a uh, did we do a spoiler cast for season two? Yeah, yeah, we for did. Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah, I think I said that you know maybe towards the ending you know it got a little shaky, but you know overall. Jessica Jones have been, has been pretty positive on Netflix. Yeah, so uh, if we do get a season four, uh, some new blood would be interesting to see where they take that character after mm-hmm. that. Uh, speaking of female characters in Marvel, Captain Marvel, uh, my, is, is Clark Gregg teasing a trailer debut for this? Mike? <laughs> uh, he put up the number 15, um, how many days ago was it? Six days ago. Um, and, you know, if, if it's in nine days, that puts it, I don't, I don't know where that would put it, uh, 
next Tuesday, the 4th, which is usually when some trailers drop for us, Mike, like Tuesday mornings. Yeah, beginning of the week. I, yeah. I, I love that, like, if you're famous enough and related to superhero franchises, if you just tweet cryptic numbers, yeah. like, then that's just enough to get everybody, like, uh, in a fury. But yeah, Captain Marvel would make sense, you know, since theoretically – he may or may not be alive or dead for the next seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and that's not coming out until the summer next year. That's so far away. Obviously, he's not teasing anything for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so what's the next big thing that you'd have to hype, which is Captain Marvel, which you have been talking about on the show. Yeah. we got to be seeing something for that movie soon. It's, it's, it's running out of time almost. Yeah, the other theory is it could be September 15th, but that's a Saturday, and that really doesn't line up with anything. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm just feeling, you know, maybe by the 4th of, of September, we will get our first trailer for this, and then that would push a month or two for for Infinity War back a little bit. Or, I love or that Avengers guy. 4. I love Clark Gregg. He's such a cool guy. He is good. I, it's, it's great to see him kind of grow with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's been in it for the first movie, and then he'll be in the most recent movie. So that's that's, that's really cool. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp was awarded the smallest certified <laughs> fresh uh, uh, trophy ever from Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> it's really entertaining. So there's the figures. There's the little Pez dispenser with the Pez sprinkled all over it. Uh, and and that's a little a cute little uh, little thing there. I right. have to say, Ant Ant Man as a character is making some strides because, like I said, I was at the mall, I was at, in nerdy stores, and I was in a store that I've talked about on the show before, Box Lunch, which is just oh. a super awesome nerdy yeah. version of Hot Topic, uh, much better. Uh, so I really really dig Box Lunch, and I was in there, and I heard uh. I, this might make me sound old, but I heard a millennial, a younger millennial girl, uh, talking like, oh, they never have any of uh, any T-shirts of my favorite superhero. And then I was just eagerly waiting for somebody to ask her what it was. And her friend like, oh, what's that? And she's just like, there's not enough Ant-Man stuff here. And I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. So I don't know if that's just her attempt to be edgy and different like i'm sure i was when i was a teenager i wanted i wanted to like stuff that people also didn't like but nothing wrong with liking ant-man but usually when you think favorite superhero you know people usually are uh thinking i guess maybe she should well, stipulate and say that she likes uh maybe scott lang because uh hank pym he ain't the he ain't the best role model out there well we, uh, in, in the comic book universe we I didn't guess. really see him in in the movie as ant-man so i can't i can't if if this i don't know how old young this girl was um uh, but I mean, if she's only you know been watching these movies since you know Iron Man has come out, or maybe even later, she may not know any different. Um, I should have just gone up to her and be like, uh, uh, "Girl, I'm gonna have to tell you, you're actually just a Paul Rudd fan, which is a very yeah. good decision. Go watch these movies; he's very funny in all of them. You'll have a great time." She, she's probably like, "Shut up, old man." I know, um, <laughs> old man. No, but but people can like Ant Man. Ant Man and Lost are both good movies, so that's yeah, fine. It was just weird. I've never heard just anybody yeah. kind of casually talk about Ant Man in the Wild before. So. Go go to a, if you find a Disney store, they have tons of Ant Man merchandise. Yeah. they are really can, pushing theirs. Well. Like, yeah, can you like imagine? Imagine ever seeing like an Ant Man T shirt, yeah. Like before these movies ever came out, you only would have ever seen him like on those reprints of kind of like the classic Avengers kind of comic book cover, and he's just kind of like there, you know. Yeah. Um, now I get awesome. you. I get you. Um, but also regarding Ant Man the Lost, and there was a poll or a study done, and it is found out that the Wasp is the only character who hasn't killed someone or suggested to kill someone in the MCU. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. It, it was a tie between her and Spider-Man, but a lot of people have pointed out that Spider-Man did suggest blowing Ebony Maw out the airlock uh, <laughs> would be his fault for killing him. Well, yeah, but uh, he, he's I, just a, he's I a get kid. It. He's like he's an alien. He probably thinks he just breathes in space. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> but if, if you don't want to have any gray areas at all, the wasp is your person. She has not all killed right. anyone in the MCU. Hey, there uh, you go. It, and that may change come next time we see her, but you never know. So um, that's that was a fun little thing I was reading this week. For Avengers 4, uh, there's a new... It's not a new theory, but I guess some, some people have been looking into the Infinity War extras on the DVDs. And this interview with Robert Downey Jr. for the, the stuff is showing him in the same room Shuri is working on the Vision's head in, in mm -hmm. Avengers 3. Meaning that at some point... Robert Downey Jr. In, in Avengers 4 makes it to Wakanda. And um, this appears to also be Robert Downey Jr. in his older makeup. He's grayed a little bit in the beard, blonder tips, and in his, his outfit. So um, 
this may there may be a time jump. We don't we don't know, but the the whole point is Tony Stark was probably going to go to Wakanda and meet Shuri. <laughs> To, to dive into the conspiracy that you're peddling here, I would say it, that's some good detective work on, on the on the end of these people d- diving into the the extras. I like the I like the work of saying yeah. uh, you know looking at his different hair and stuff. But to be devil's advocate, uh, this is all like shot in like the same compound down in Atlanta. I would just imagine the documentary crew showed yeah. up and was just like, "What's the coolest looking room that's not being used right now that we can film Robert Downey Jr. in?" And it's like, "Oh, how about this one?" And the documentary crew's probably like, never even seen the movies, and they're because they're probably just too busy like making making stuff about like people dying of famines in other countries i would even just like this one looks nice put them in here (laughs) i would go a little a little farther than that those documentary crews don't make the behind the scenes videos so don't don't get that mixed up (laughs) but how much green screen is on set uh, on these videos mike yeah tons of green screen (laughs) put 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 this these actors in front of a green screen and then that that backdrop behind robert engineer looks a little more fake uh it doesn't look nearly as um like the lighting's just too good on it, so I think is it maybe it might be a static image behind it um, that they green screen them. But I don't know. This is just some cool stuff people are finding as they're digging into the the, the stuff a little harder. I mean, like yeah. you know, it took it took for the home the digital research to find out that um, what's the name Cole Obsidian had on the, the Captain Marvel sash. So mm-hmm. I bet we're still gonna find some little Easter eggs and and, and fun facts as as we go through this. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I love the I love the investigative journalism because you got to get the facts like where you can. It's not like any of these people can like sneak onto on the lot in like Georgia with like a telephoto lens and start like snapping this stuff. They're just like, hey, got to do what I can, and that's the Blu-ray they gave me. <laughs> walk, walk, watch it back and forth until you find what you can get. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's Avengers Four news for the week. Uh, Black Panther. They are uh, apparently Disney and Marvel are starting to do pushing for Best Picture nomination. Mike, they're not going costume. They're not going popular. They're going full on Best Picture nomination. Yeah. So, for this. so this is one thing that's kind of been bugging me a little bit because this is getting caught up in that other Oscar announcement where they might do Best Popular Picture. But like you told me on the show last week. If that is indeed a thing, best popular picture, a category that they want to do, that's not going to be at the next Oscars, right? It's not going to be until the following year. No, so it'd, be, all... it'd, be, it'd be next year. Yeah. And wait, so, But would Black Panther be eligible for it? Yeah, because everything within calendar year 2017... Oh, I thought you were saying that that, that that wouldn't be rolled around until the next Oscars. So kind of like movies coming out in 2019 would be eligible for it. No, 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 no. Anything in 20, or I guess 2018, 20, anything in 2018 would be eligible for this upcoming. Because we already had our 2017 Oscars, the next one would be the 2018. So anything from January 1st to December 31st. Or probably actually before that because it has to be in theaters for a while. Man, is eligible Oscars, for the next Oscars. You, you got to confirm this thing for me already. But there was a theory... Uh, that I did like, where if you look at the technical uh, uh, verbiage of what that popular thing, it says it says best achievement in popular film or something along the lines. The, the word achievement in there is in there. And then usually they give out achievement awards at the Oscars, which isn't basically a, a versus race. So some people are saying, well, they haven't given, given us a lot of information about this category. It could possibly just end up being a special award that they give out. Maybe it's not going to be a thing where there's a, they put all the contestants up and on split screen and then the a winner gets announced. It might just be like they just come to a conclusion before they even uh, decide to put the show together. And it's like, oh, who's going to win it this year? Uh, let's give it to this person. And we'll do like a little uh, film montage up on screen of all the stuff that it accomplished. So that's still a possibility. So maybe maybe there, maybe Black Panther is pushing for best picture because you can't really push for best popular picture. That's something that the Academy is just going to, you know, randomly decide on. It's not going to really be voted, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they've not, um, like you said, they, they've not put out the eligibility requirements, but you can't, I don't think, you you can't get both, pretty much, is, is what it's going. Everyone hates this, uh, by the way. Nobody nobody in <laughs> film likes the best popular um, movie. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I follow a lot of critics on uh, YouTube and Twitter, and they, they, yeah, they don't seem to be jiving with uh, they, the... They used to have a category called the Blockbuster Awards, if you didn't know that, and it didn't work. Like they had, they ended up taking that out. So like it is, it is gonna be, um, yeah, it's gonna be weird. But also, I mean, speaking of Oscars, they've they've reduced it down to three hours uh, as well. Like it used to be five hours, 
and they're going to do three hours and give away like smaller technical awards during commercials uh, because yeah. viewership is down horribly for these Oscars. Yeah, like, I mean, that's year. that's kind of the, uh, the double-edged sword of the Oscars where it's like, yeah, technically the Oscars doesn't have to be televised. They could just give the awards away. They could even email you and let you know that you won the award and just kind of take the fanfare away. But if you're going to be a televised event, you got to make it entertaining. So, like, it is kind of a, a shame that maybe, like, you know, some of these technical awards won't get the screen time, but it's just like, well, if they don't pivot, there might not be a televised Oscars in a couple of years because no one's watching it. So mm. it's like, uh, it's unfortunate that you got cut, but, like, just be happy for this long people have been watching it with all of the competition out there on screen. You know, there people could easily switch over from watching the Oscars uh, where rich people get awards <laughs> for stuff uh, just over to Netflix and, like, you know, watch a TV show or something. So, it, it, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a no-win situation there. Yeah, it, and honestly, I don't watch them. I, 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 just, I just don't watch them. So I'm, I'm part of that thing. I would just rather read, them, read about it later. Twitter's, Twitter's more up-to-date than most TV shows are. <laughs> um, but they have hired Cynthia Swartz, an Oscar strategist, to actually persuade the Academy and Guilds to get Black Panther nominated and voted for uh, come come this Academy Award season. Yeah, I mean, I did not I, know Oscar strategist was a thing yeah. until today. So they are really going all out on this. I mean, if I had to predict, I think there's a chance Black Panther could get nominated. You know, because they nominate, I think, eight films. So I think it could possibly slot in there. It's not going to win. It's just not the type of movie that the Academy is going to vote on as winner of Best Picture. I could definitely see it winning for, like, Best Costume Design or, an, or like, an ancillary category like that, for sure. And the Academy might not just do that for for its best costume but also like oh i really like that movie i want to give it some sort of award so they still might get ultimately what they really want which is they want to re-release the blu-ray with a little stamp on the front of it that says oscar winner you know that's what you know that's what they want so mm -hmm. you know they might get that i think it's nine films that get nominated no is it nine now yeah i think i think it's one two three four five six seven eight nine you had to look it up because um Again, I'm not one of those people. I can't tell you uh, who won the Oscar in 2008, Mike. I, I, I don't know the best picture winners at all. Um, and, and honestly, sometimes it's harder to... Like, I haven't seen a lot of the best picture nominees. But if I feel if Mad Max Fury Road can make it into, you know, the final nine, you know, it does have a chance here. Um, but will it be chosen? I don't know. We don't know what other movies are going to be up the rest of this year either. Um, I've not seen anything... This year, that's like I've heard anything that's like blowing well, people out of the water. A lot of the Oscar stuff kind of comes at the towards the end of the yeah. year, so some of the stuff that's going to get nominated hasn't even come out yet. So, don't but, worry but too I've much not about seen. It. Well, I've not seen trailers. I've not heard anything about them, and that's what's really kind of like. Normally, you hear a little bit more this time of years, but mm. um, will it make? It will it make there? I, I don't know. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, not really. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I I just I'm just looking forward to the announcement for Black Panther two more than. We were nominated for an Oscar. I mean, I ultimately, we're just here to watch Aquaman ride on a shark and watch somebody punch Thanos in the face. That's right. At the end of the day, that's, that's all I really want. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, hopefully this will be like the last bit of information we have on this movie for fucking months, because I'm just tired of talking about it, um, has been put on hold for the time being. I'm using air quotes here. Uh, because how can something be, without a release date be really put on hold, you may ask? Mm -hmm. Um, the pre-production crew members in Atlanta who have been dismissed because they were congregating to get ready for pre-production and are free to find other work in the meantime. Um, but also, in a side note, related or unrelated, I don't know, Taika Waititi took a meeting with Marvel and Kevin Feige about, uh, but we're unclear about what project he met with them about. Mm. So, Well, I think we are all assuming that uh, Taika Waititi was going to be doing some sort of film. I mean, he knocked Ragnarok out of the park uh, for sure. So uh, he he would be doing something. So I mean, would I guess, you want to keep him in the same vein as like Thor four? Well, I think his voice matches with Guardians really well, and you know, it seems yeah. it only seems obvious just because I've heard it so many times. But maybe if you don't keep up with it too much, a lot of people have been wanting Taika to take up the mantle for Guardians three, and I think that might be the best 
case scenario because the the cast and crew of Guardians seem to really love James Gunn uh, and now unfortunately he's gone so like how do you fill that role because a, a movie is not just necessarily about slotting people in and seeing how they perform you know like you know like a lineup for like a baseball team you know they're not playing money ball over here you don't you got like a family and a community over here who's trying to make some people could argue, but you know, a piece of art. So, uh, how do you put in like a, a, your new captain to to helm this giant film? I mean, I think Taika would be a, a welcome addition. You know, he's he's done another Marvel movie. He's worked within the the Marvel uh, kind of structure. He made a great Thor movie. Uh, I, I'm sure the cast and crew maybe even came across him a couple of times when they were filming Infinity War. So, I feel like that would be a good bridge. You know, because I'm kind of worried a little bit about the Guardians crew, like, you know, just not vibing, especially Dave Batista. like, he's going to be showing up to to film this movie without James Gunn, he's very upset, you know, we want the best performance out of these people as possible, you know, Taika might be able to manage that, and he, you know, he's funny too, well, and the Guardians are funny. Well, well, I, I did, I mean, I said that several months ago, uh, or I mm. guess a, a month or two ago when this first happened, I don't know if he would actually take it, simply because who wants that job? Like, no, you're thinking out of protest. Well, they. I don't. Well, think not, they not even possibly... out of protest, but like, look, I, I'm glad you want me for this job, but like, I don't want to fill James Gunn's shoes. But unless James Gunn goes to him specifically and be like, look, I would love for you to take over this film project. Maybe, yeah. maybe he has a little more pull to help decide who that's going to be behind the scenes and what, what what we know as well. He's like, yeah, I would love to give this to Taiko T because I was listening to some older shows from exactly one year ago. Mm-hmm. One year goes when James Gunn was like. I'm planning out the next 10 to 20 years of Marvel, Cosmic Marvel for us. Now what do we do without a Cosmic Marvel plan? Like, what, what is... Who is going to helm all this stuff? He, he wasn't just weighing Guardians 3 on his shoulder. He was weighing a bunch of Cosmic Marvel on his shoulder. Yeah, well, Taika doesn't strike me as a person who would want to craft an entire science fiction universe. It seems mm-hmm. like he just kind of wants to come in and make, a, like, a funny you know, movie. So I, I do like the point yeah, let, that wrong. you bring up. I like the point that you bring up that James Gunn might have a little bit of a say, and that would be the best way to do it. Be like, Hey, this is your new director. Um, he was handpicked by James Gunn. He understands the tough situation that he's not going to be able to direct this movie, but he thinks this person is the best person to fill his shoes. Treat him nicely. He's here. He's here to execute his vision, but also respect what I've told him about what I would wanted to do for the movie. So, yeah, I like that idea, Chris. Yeah, and, and that's hopefully what works out. Knock on wood. I did look into some research. There is a there is a way like it would cost Disney years and and millions of, and millions of dollars but i don't think they can actually they could not use james gunn's script or give him credit on the next movie regardless of what they do at this point mm-hmm. because even though marvel owned these characters the ones he's created on the film are his versions of the characters and according to the writers guild of america like they would have to retool everything to get james gunn's name off of this from yeah. now on so that's why and- they're using his script yeah Unless they, and that, they do it all. Yeah, and that ultimately goes back to the firing in general where it was just for it was just for public, you know, it was just yeah. for the public to feel safer to go see these movies. Because yeah, you can't really ultimately financially write gun out of these movies. You know, like you said, he created the characters. It sounds like they're still gonna be using his script, which is kind of a little that, bit hypocritical. That's, well that's why no, that's why they have to use a script, because it costs so much money to do it. The Writers Guild of America has very strict rules and regulations about what what goes on uh do you know joss whedon essentially wrote everything from speed but because he didn't change the characters or anything he does not get a single credit on it huh because of the yeah you gotta look i'll send you the link on this writer's guild stuff it is huge like i was like going into this but the writer's guild is very very strict about what they can and can't do that's yeah. why they have to use this, the script or at least give him written by james gunn at the end yeah. of the day so. But I think I think we all agree that the firing from Disney was really just to save yeah. face. Yeah. They ultimately they they I think they would have just wanted Gunn to stay on, but gotta they gotta protect those kids out there. Or they just put it on hold in, in a year when everyone forgets about it, hire them back again. Yeah. Uh, one of those things might happen. So either way, Guardians is on hold, quote unquote hold. We don't have a release date for anything beyond Spider Man: Far From Home. I think Doctor Strange may take up one of these blank spaces. Black Panther two might get pushed up a little bit. We might get to see that Black Widow movie a little quicker. Um, so we're, we're going to see what happens with Marvel Phase 4. So we'll, we'll keep you posted. 
Star Wars Episode Nine. I actually got to talk to Marshall a little bit about these photos this weekend. Um, so here's some news for it. They've added the film has added Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings and X Men Origins Wolverine to the cast. Mm-hmm. Um, most people will remember him from Lord of the Rings as one of the, as, Pip, maybe or yeah, one of Pip them or the other guy. Yeah, Pip <laughs> or the other guy. You'll know him. And he was uh, he played the character I think Beak in X Men Origins Wolverine. He could like light up power like with his with himself. Yes, uh, we all remember yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's got one of he was in Lost. He's got that face. It's something about his face. You just know him when you see him. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the Chewbacca star, um, the actor, it is not the Peter Mayhew is not doing Chewbacca anymore. Uh, it's this guy. He's from, he's Finnish. Uh, his name's pronounced uh, Hunas Swot- Sotomo. Hunas that Sotomo. Sound, that sounds like a Star Wars character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he had canceled upcoming convention appearances to do additional Star Wars filming. A lot of people thought they got his Star Wars Nine stuff done during the solo production because he was already mm-hmm. doing it. So. Um, He's going to be there. And actually, we actually have some footage of him filming stuff from this past week already. Uh, we get to see Chewbacca, very tall, very Chewbacca-ish, and some horses that have been added extra fur over and CG rubber like or markings on their faces. Gonna yeah, I, I saw creatures. these photos earlier in the week, and I didn't notice all the extra hair. I was just kind of drawn to the fact that it was just a horse. And I was like, wait a minute, this isn't Star Wars. Don't they need some sort of weird trunk coming out of their face or some sort of elaborate horns or something? So I, it looks like all that stuff is going to be added after the fact because they ain't just horses in Star Wars universe. they got to yep. have something extra on them. Yep, so they're fuzzy horses with CGI markers on their faces. Uh, and lastly, the photos here, uh, Poe and Finn are on a mission on this planet, wherever it may be, with Chewbacca. Um, Man, look how dapper they look. Yeah, uh, you know, I, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, don't, I got nothing else to show. He's got binoculars in his hands, he's scoping something out, and they, they look like they're on a mission to this grassy planet that looks like it's full You know of what? It was a it was a casino planet in the previous movie. This one's an Indian casino planet. They gotta in, infiltrate in there. Just they they they're taking the law the wrong lessons from the last movie. They thought we wanted more casinos. We want less. So hopefully he's not looking at a casino. What? Why? Why do you think he looked at? Never mind. That's, the, that's just what that's what Finn does in these movies uh, now. He's just <laughs> infiltrating casinos, trying to find Lando. Well, they are finding Lando in the second one. Yeah, so that's true. They might be finding him right here. Does not look like Cloud City, that's for sure. Maybe anyway. it's the bottom of Cloud City. We've never seen the bottom. No, and it's not. That they, they, <laughs> no, no. Star Wars Resistance. We're going to talk about this show, this animated show. Uh, on the Star Wars website, they've now taken it down. Apparently, Resistance takes place six months prior to The Force Awakens. All right. Uh, we didn't know where it's set, but they've deleted it, so maybe they can just add more if they want. Like, oh, maybe we don't have... We can't fill it six months' time. We need more time. Yeah, so. I was going to say that doesn't give them a whole lot of runway for, like, a brand new TV show. Uh, like, once I feel like once you run up into uh, The Force Awakens, you're kind of like the universe would really change. I don't know if you have a whole lot of room to play around in there. So, uh, yeah, maybe they're just like, no, 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 it's not six months. It's six years. Uh, who knows? Yeah, uh, well, it can't be because uh, it's got Poe Dameron in it and Phasma. Huh? He could be. They could all be six years younger. How old is How old is Poe? Like what? Like late twenties? He could be twenty. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to see how. I don't know how long the show is. I don't know if it's one of those eleven minute shows or if it's like a full twelve minute show. Um, it's maybe not- they're just taking like the the Jack Bauer twenty four route, where it's just it's- like, <laughs> yeah, six months is plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six months. We, we can we can fill this for forever with this ten. No, that's the live action one. It's not ten episodes. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. They'll announce it later. But uh, that's what I that's what I got for this week, Mike. That's that's our news. Do um, you want to go ahead and remind people about our giveaway? Oh yeah, uh, superhero slate dot com slash infinity war. Uh, give us your email address, and uh, we'll we'll update you every week when a new episode is posted. And uh, you'll also be entered to win the super crazy deluxe version of Infinity War. That's like. Uh, more K's than my TV can handle, and also you could. Uh, what is it? What are, are we saying? Second place wins that big old Thanos pop. We're just. We're just. Gonna, I mean, I wouldn't say second place. We're just gonna pick winners of people who've signed up. So one, oh, like cool. this person, will do it, and then uh, they're taken out of the pot, and then the next per, the next uh, winner will be the remaining people. Um, I'm still trying to see if I have any extra stuff. I, I have. A, 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 um, a box full of kind of giveaway stuff I've kind of gathered up over the years. So I may actually have, like, maybe a Deadpool figure or something yeah. like that. To throw Listen here, people. Chris has a lot of crap, <laughs> and he might 
put it in your envelope when he sends you this stuff. None of this is so, going to fit in an envelope. I'm going to have to pay shipping on a lot of these. So so you're going to be getting some bonus swag out of this guy because he is drowning in it. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I'd like the, to give it out at conventions, but I, I'm not. my next convention um, isn't until next March that I can think of, unless I go to the one, the new one in Louisville, but I'm, I'm not banking on that. So I, I want to get make sure that you guys, our listeners, you know, you're we appreciate you. And I've got all this stuff from all these like loot crates and boxes I've been getting in. And I'm, while I, I do love all the stuff, I don't need it all. And I would like to give it out to people who, who do want it. So Yeah, look at you. SuperheroSlate.com slash Infinity War. Slash Infinity War. Sign up and get ready, Chris. Yeah, get good. Mike, people want to know what you're up to. Where can they find you at otherwise? Well, I told you guys out there to at me a couple times, so if you want to yell at me, you can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to keep up with you, maybe they want to yell at you also. Where can they find you? Well, if you guys want to tell me good things, like how pretty I am, you can find <laughs> me on Twitter at Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N, or Instagram, Valdan87. Uh, fun fact, Mike, I just got uh, an order is on its way from Box Lunch to me right now, just to speak oh, about Box Lunch. Oh, that is a fun fact. That is a fun fact. It is a cro- gold chrome Star Lord pop vinyl, so only available <laughs> you, in Box Lunch. Uh, you're an insufferable nerd. Uh, I, you, you saw the picture I sent you before this, right? <laughs> oh, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I am, I'm super nerd this weekend. Uh, other than that, Mike, takes on home. Where can people find all the other stuff at? As always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That's the best place to find all the avenues we host our little show here and to get our awesome show notes. So we did talk about a few like leaked little screenshots, some teaser photos. If you want to look at the research that we did for all of these uh, animated 90s movies, we got all that in the show notes because sometimes we're just moving so fast and furious we might not, we might miss a bullet point or two. So you might get some extra news if you go look at those show notes. But SuperheroSlate.com and that is where you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. We try to put it everywhere that we can. So mm-hmm. if you got like a podcast service out there that you just love and you're just so mad that Superhero Slate's not on us on it, just let us know. And all we have to do is like submit the feed. It's like really easy to get We're, there. We are working on Spotify. Like they are the worst people to try to get a podcast. Oh, man, on, so. I'd love to. I'd love to get up on there, man. I am uh, trying but, so hard. <laughs> but you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at superheroslate.com slash store. Uh, if you're a fan of the show, we love hearing from you. You can you can add us however however often you want. We're on Twitter. We're both on uh, Twitter ourselves. Yep. Uh, personally, uh, we love hearing from you. Drop comments on, in the YouTube. We've, we've been seeing yeah. that a lot more, so that's a good place. Those are and fun. Actually, and I see those like instantly because I haven't turned the notifications off for that, so those get sent like directly to my email. So I will see those notifications. No, no matter what, uh, at least for now, <laughs> until yeah. I find that little checkbox and I can just go look at it whenever I want to go look at it. So we love hearing from you. And if you want to be a super fan of the show, if you want that, uh, if you want to put that stamp in your passport, uh, superhero slate super fan, because you visited our, our our imaginary land that I would think is maybe somewhere in South America. That's where the, the country of superhero slate is, because there's no there's like no tax rules down there. That's that's where we're, we're actually airing from. All you got to do is uh, share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and you can come visit us in our imaginary country. You know what? If you guys get your picture for your passport with the superhero slate shirt on, I'll be super impressed. That's, oh my god, don't do that. I feel like that's, that's a le- bad that's, idea. Legit, that's one thing you. <laughs> can do other than this fake south american country mike's just made up for us so anyway we'll catch you guys next week (laughs) all right bye everybody thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe that's a lot going on there so that's like a Lacroix with vodka in it pretty much it's a berry lemonade